Hello everyone, welcome back to Timing Apple for part two, part two, <laughs> V3. Uh, I wanted to, I was, I know I said in the last video I was going to wait till after Sony to do this, but um, I am very long winded and I'm sure I'm going to have a lot to talk about with Sony. So I'm going to go ahead and get Ubisoft and Bethesda out of the way. We did try to watch Devolver Digital and the PC Gaming Show, but I don't even know how to describe what happened in Devol Devolver Digital. And I actually ended up missing most of the PC Gaming Show. Because I got the, I found the wrong time. I thought it started at two. It started earlier, um, but I was able to see that they were they announced an Age of Empires definitive edition. So if you liked Age of Empires, there you go. So we'll start with yeah Bethesda. Bethesda was first. So we'll start with them. And did did this? They did. But get that. They did this really cool thing where they um were presenting the entire thing as them showing off a theme park, and it was and it's kind of cool that uh, after I saw the presentation, I found a video of a bunch of uh, journalists actually going through like apparently like a mini theme park that they did build with a ferris wheel and everything so uh that was pretty cool that was fun but uh as far as games go uh the two now the two announcements they started with at the beginning was for uh a doom vr game and a fallout 4 vr game so apparently doom doom is going to be called doom vfr and uh, it's not a full game uh, i figured this out after the conference they said it wasn't going to be necessarily a full doom game but it was mostly going to be like a bunch of activities you can do in vr but fallout 4 vr will be the entire fallout 4 game in vr so that's cool it's probably the, like the longest vr game that probably will be in existence uh they showed off elder scrolls online morrowind stuff with that they talked about um they're going to start doing this program called the creation club for mods on consoles is what it seemed like they're talking about and you'd have to use some kind of currency to get them like most some of the mods are actually made from developers and some are from the community uh i'm a little confused about what they were trying to talk about with that but um there's that uh they talked about elder scrolls legends again which is their card game based on the elder scrolls series most of you probably know that but they're also uh bringing an expansion called heroes of skyrim which gives a whole bunch of skyrim themed cards like dragonborns and stuff uh, and this is probably where i got the most interested in the uh this is probably the most interesting thing for me so, we already knew that Skyrim was coming to the Switch, and they finally had a trailer for it, actually talking about it. But here's the weird thing, is that it's apparently going to have Amiibo compatibility. I wasn't expecting that at all. So, like, the only one, they showed this in the trailer, the only one they had was um, Archer Link from Breath of the Wild. And they tapped it in, and it spawned a chest, and then they showed off uh, your character holding the Master Sword, the Hylian Shield, and wearing the uh, Champion's Tunic, which is the blue shirt that he wears in Breath of the Wild. And uh, that was as far as they actually got with that. And then also Skyrim for Switch will allow for motion controls for swinging and shooting arrows and stuff, which I kind of hope you can turn off. I'm sure I'll probably try it a little bit because now I'm going to get Skyrim for Switch. I wasn't really going to get Skyrim for Switch. I played it on the PS4. But uh, with Amiibo support, I probably actually will get it just to check that out. But um, yeah, motion controls. And they didn't... There haven't really been very clear about what all Amiibo support there will be and what all you'll be able to unlock besides Master Sword, Hylian Shield, and Champion's Tunic. There was a, in the If you look at the trailer online, apparently in the description it states that uh, Amiibos from all lines of The Legend of Zelda plus Super Smash Brothers will be compatible. Now, the common thing about all that is there's, of course, a Link Amiibo in all of them. So we don't know if it's just Link Amiibos that will... I need to stop saying Amiibos. The plural of Amiibo is Amiibo. We don't know if it's just Link Amiibo that'll be compatible, or maybe with the Smash series they'll put some other ones in there. But uh, hopefully we'll get more of that later, because I'd like to see some Fire Emblem weapons myself, and who knows what else they can do. Buster Sword! They're not gonna do Final Fantasy, Dylan. It's not even Nintendo. But it's got, it's, it's got the Amiibo. <laughs> There's, that's, a, that's a stretch. But we'll see. It is part of the Super Smash Brothers series, so who knows. Um, they also announced a new expansion for Dishonored, I guess Dishonored 2, uh, Death of the Outsider. I have never, I haven't played Dishonored, so I don't know what was all important about that. Apparently, like, oh, people that we were with watching it said that, were surprised that some of the characters were alive, so I guess that was a sort of a big twist, is that there's a, a character that's alive, but I couldn't tell you anything else about him. I'm sorry. Um... They also showed off more for Quake Champions and announced some tournaments that they're going to be doing for that and talked about the legacy of how it's been a, a big esports and almost pretty much started esports. And then they find, and then they announced the Evil Within 2, which kind of looks, from what I've seen of the original Evil Within, this looks a lot different than what the Evil Within 1 was. Like, Most they, definitely. 
Yeah, there's Ricky. Ricky says most definitely. Um, they're like in the trailer. They showed like this dude going through a whole bunch of sequences, transitioning from like this white goop, and uh, it seems like he's trying to save his daughter from. I, I guess like a long time ago, his daughter like burned in a house. In fact, that was the whole backstory of the first one. That's one of the like the crippling depressions you find out in the game. So okay. yeah, well, there you go. So, um, that looks cool. I don't know if I'll play it. I didn't play the first one. And scary games I do not get along with. <laughs> um, and the last thing they talked about was the sequel to the new Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. So, um, that looked good. There was, a, there was a lot of story details, it seemed, in that game. Where, like, this main dude was, like, he woke up in this place. He didn't know where he was. And then there was Nazis everywhere. And... He found this resistance group, and they almost shot him because they thought he was a Nazi, even though he said he wasn't a Nazi, but they took that as a Nazi, so they shot him, and then he had the metal thing on his head. And yeah. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the dude taking acid and seeing the cartoon salamander. While, while the woman pregnant with twins is repeatedly stabbing a guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, yeah. I almost forgot about that. Thanks, Dylan. You're welcome. So, yeah, they didn't have all too many announcements, but they had some good ones, and, like, the whole Bethesda Land theme was fun, and... I would kind of wish I was there to go check out some of the attractions they would have at their mini Bethesda land. That seems cool. It was definitely an enjoyable approach that they took this year. Yeah. 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 It was entertaining. It was. It was entertaining. Uh, and then next is Ubisoft. They, uh, there was, theirs was longer, but they didn't have too many games to show off either. Well, they had quite a few. Uh, they started actually pretty strong with, uh, they finally officially announced Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which I think has just been a rumor up till now, but there was like an official picture leaked so like it was all but confirmed and now they've actually finally confirmed and what's interesting is that they actually had Shigeru Miyamoto come up on stage to talk with a uh, oh god I don't even know how to say the name of the Ubisoft dude Yves Kim Kim Yip, I don't know one of the head Ubisoft dudes with Shigeru Miyamoto they were talking about the game and apparently it's like going to be a uh, tactical uh I'm not I guess combat. tactical RPG tactical combat a lot of people are comparing it to XCOM. And yeah, I can, and I, I can see it. Yeah, I totally see that. Yeah, you can do things like... So, instead of, like, moving spaces, which is, like, what I've seen in most games like this, you actually just have an area that you can move, and you can move to anywhere in that area. And uh, you can also, like, do these team-up moves. Like, the characters that you play as are different Mario characters, and then, di and then just rabbits dressed up as those Mario characters. And they each have certain weapons that they can use and like you can make it to where they do this team jump thing where like if mario's one place they can have one of the rabbits come up mario can springboard them to a further distance yeah and to sort of get a more tactical position on the enemy um so it looked it looked a lot more interesting than what i thought like i was i've seen i've known about this mario plus rabbit thing for a while and it kind of i wasn't sure if i was too interested because i never really was interested in most of the rabbit stuff but I don't, it, it, it's a lot different from a normal Mario game. Like, especially with the trailer music they were playing. It was like a rock song. I've never... It was, it was music I've never heard associated with Mario before. And so, that's going to be interesting. And that's coming to Switch exclusively, of course. Uh, they showed more of Assassin's Creed Origins, but not a lot. I think they mostly showed what they wanted to show during the Microsoft conference. So there wasn't really too much new with that. It's taking place in Egypt. It's called Assassin's Creed Origins. Coming out October 27th. They announced the crew too. I'm not really interested in that, so I'll just move on. <laughs> it has a motor; you can drive it. Yeah, and then they finally. The next thing they did is they finally announced the release date for South Park: The Fractured Butthole. Um, it's coming out October 17th. That should just be part of the subtitle at this point. Yeah, just the little eh, <laughs> at the bottom. Because every yeah. time someone says it, they go. Eh. <laughs> even them, even them up on stage, it's just the fractured butthole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, I'm excited. I, I got excited about that last year. I was really looking forward to that, and then they delayed it, and I got sad. But, yeah, I really can't wait for that. It looks hilarious. I still need to play the first one, but, yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for that. And then after that, they talked about a new VR game called Transference, and it's continuing the trend where there seems to just be some kind of fever dream type thing going on. I don't well, even... Elijah Wood showed up, and... Well, Elijah Wood did show up in that? That was him. Oh, Okay, Elijah Wood was in it. Yes. Okay. I, I wasn't thinking about that. I was trying to process what was going on. The whole time we were sitting there talking, I was like, is, is that? that no, no. And then as soon as it was over, they were talking about Elijah Wood being in it. I was like, 
Oh, I, okay, I then. completely I'm, forgot I'm, about that. I yeah. was just trying to comprehend what that what I'm, they were trying to get with it. I'm not really sure what they were trying to do with it. Is like they were they were sort of presenting it as like you going into the mind of someone else to experience their trauma. Yeah. Don't worry, it is completely safe. You will not be hurt. They didn't seem very confident you, you about that. Be, you will not be hurt. Didn't seem very confident about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then their next announcement, next announcement, I am stoked for. They announced a new game called Skull and Bones, which is basically if you've played Black Flag, it take is out, a game. Take out Assassin's Creed and just keep the ships. Yeah, it is all. It seems to just be. I hope. I kind of hope there's more than just naval combat, but it just. They seem to be really focusing on the naval combat portion, and I am stoked. And they even have sea shanties. Sea shanties are even there. I, I loved Black Flag and I loved Rogue. I feel like Rogue had more than Black Flag in it. Um, it's like Rogue was like the culmination of all of Assassin's Creed up until that point. And uh, they, I think they kind of expanded a little bit more on the naval stuff and the pirate stuff than Black Flag. But most people associate it with Black Flag. They're both fun. I had lo tons of fun with both. And I cannot wait for this. It's going to be a more multiplayer kind of thing. You can actually battle with other people and their ships. It's one fleet versus several fleets. Yeah, so... Uh, it's kind of awkward that both Sea of Thieves and Skull and Bones yeah, are both uh, talking points. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have been talking about that. But Skull and Bones seems to be more about the ship combat, whereas Sea of Thieves is more about uh, the uh, actually finding treasure and stuff. But uh, I, I'm, I'm stoked for Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones looks awesome. Uh, then they talked about Just Dance. Everyone knows what Just Dance is by this point. Uh, they announced a new mobile game, South Park Phone Destroyer. It is cowboys versus Indians versus wizards versus cops versus aliens versus robots versus choir boys versus all kinds of stuff. I think it's like some kind of tactical RPG kind of thing. I'm not sure. <laughs> but that's how they described it. It's everyone versus everyone. We'll just have to wait and see. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, oh, I'm, ex I'm sort of excited about this one, but I want more information on it beforehand. Uh, Ubisoft is now throwing their own hat into... I didn't really say Toys to Life, but it's basically kind of a Toys to Life game. It's called Starlink Battle for Atlas. Um, they showed it as, like, it's a space, it's, it's a game that takes place in space, and most of what they showed was just, uh, ship, uh, spaceship, dogfighting, that's the word I was looking for. Dogfighting with spaceships, but, um, they showed, uh, these images of you snapping a toy ship onto your controller, be it Switch, PS4, or Xbox One, and you like modifying it with different parts to sort of have a customized ship or like customized weapons. So there's a toy aspect to it, but they didn't go too much into what all that would mean. Because there was also like an image of you with, with like a human figure snapping on somewhere. So we don't know what that does. And I don't even know how it's reading it or not. Because not... They used this controller for it, but there's not really... That's gonna fall. Oh well. There's not really a port on it anywhere to plug anything in, so I'm not sure how it's going to communicate with the Switch itself, but I'm sh I guess they've got an idea of how they're going to do that. I'll set that there for now. So, I've always, I'm have i always interested in the Toys to Life stuff for some reason, I don't even know why, but something about the physical aspect of it gets me interested, so I'm interested to hear more about that. That looks cool. They talked about Steep and how they're going to be adding stuff for the Winter Olympics. It's sports I didn't really pay attention, and I'm not really interested, so I don't need to go into that much. Um, and then they talked more about Far Cry 5. We, they've, they've already announced Far Cry 5, and we know that it's taking place in America. Uh, what state is it taking in, Dylan? I believe Montana. Yeah, it's taking place in a, a county in Montana, and uh, basically Hope a local... Falls. What? Hope Falls, I think, was the name of the city. I thought it was Hope County. Hope something. I saw Falls on the water tower. Oh, well... Something falls in Montana, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just this, um, the, these fanatics have taken over the county, and now you're these this group of freelancers trying to come in and quell the situation. Yeah. You have the fangs for hire. Yeah, that's one, that's one of the characters. Wait, what? Oh, fangs yeah, the dog. Hire. Yeah, the dog. Yeah, one of the, one of the actual, like, team members is the dog, and it act, it's, it's, it's funny, because it actually, they like... They gave each person, like, basically their title. There was, like, the death from above, eye in the sky... Things for hire. Specifically with, specifically with the dog, the dog will go over and attack an enemy, take it down, and then give you the weapon that it was holding. So that that was pretty cool. I don't I don't know if I've seen that before. That, did Dog Meat do that in Fallout 4? I never played Fallout 4. Ricky? I don't think he... No, he never um, did that. D-Dog could stun, slit throats, and distract. He couldn't carry items to you. So yeah, that's something new that I haven't seen with the whole yeah. animal um, partner thing. But yeah, that's cool. 
And then the last announcement they have, I kind of wish I was a little bit more excited about this, but I don't have much I don't have much knowledge on the series, but I know that a lot of people are excited about this. They finally announced Beyond Good and Evil 2. People have been wanting this for years and they finally announced it. But uh like I said, I don't know too much about it. So I can't really say on how how much how much they're delivering on the promise of a sequel to Beyond Good and Evil. Although they did say it was actually a prequel, not a sequel. It takes place before the birth of the main character from the first one. And they seem to talk a lot about, like, online stuff about it. And it seemed like, from what I knew about the first game, it was a more story-driven experience, where they seem to want this to be sort of a online co-op exploration experience. I don't know. But, uh... Well, if, you're, just... if you're a fan of Beyond Good and Evil, definitely go look up that trailer... And, uh, you might be more excited about it, you, you, since you're more knowledgeable about it, you might be more excited about it than me, but I, I, I have Beyond Good and Evil 1 actually on my PS3, I just need to get around to playing it, I bought it on sale, but, uh, that's still exciting that they finally, uh, announced that this is happening, we're finally getting another game in that series, that's cool. And, uh, that is all from those two conferences, and next is finally Sony, one of the two that I'm most excited about, Sony and Nintendo are always the two that I'm most excited about that, so, tonight at 8, Sony... That's not when this video will be up. That's when the conference will start. So we'll put a video up after that soon. So later, everyone. Bye. Bye.